Well, hello interwebs. How are we this evening? It's a fine and rainy, horrible night here tonight. I hope everyone's well, and as always, can you hear me? Can you see me? Is it working well? Uh, hopefully it is. Seem to be a bit of a delay on my end, but I'm hoping you can't see anything on yours. Let's do the old roll call first of all and introduce ourselves. Who have we got in? So, going back to the start, about an hour ago, Rocky's Rocky. You were a bit early, either that or I was very late, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, got Discus Keeper, we've got Pit Zotic, Sandy Doty, Paul Sabucci, there's a blast from the past. Not heard from you for a while, and God, loads of comments. I'll come back to them in a minute. Loaves and Fishies, Adam78, Darren Fieldhouse, Simple Fish Life, how's it going? Tiskin. Debbie from Manchester. Hello, Debbie. I've just replied to one of your comments that you left on my video about this tank stand. So you can ask me more about it if you want. Anna Smith. Daryl, how's it going? You and McDonald. Sandy Cheeks. <laughs> uh, yes, Ben. Nice shot. I, I did mean to change this. I apologise. I might think the guy's a tool, but his shirt's nice. It's very comfy. I have had my ears lowered, um, it's that time, fortunately I can do all this myself with one piece of equipment, I can just do my whole entire head and it all comes off, um, yeah it's a bit severe, that's why I tend to leave it a month in between because I look like the, the criminal at the moment. Um, Shane, hello there, so let's go back to what was Paul saying. Uh, well, shall we address the elephant in the room? Some of you might be here expecting to see uh, me, and then maybe over here or over here somewhere, Michael's Fish Room. Mike from Michael's Fish Room. Because this was meant to be the Across the Ponds uh, stream. He did it for me, well, I don't know, maybe a year ago probably, where he hosted me on his, and then we always said we'd get round to it when I got my internet fixed, that we would do the the reverse, but unfortunately he had some family stuff came up, um, so no drama or anything like that, he just couldn't make it tonight, so we've had to postpone, so tonight's going to be a bit off the cuff, a bit uh, flying by the seat of my pants as to what we want to talk about, hence the questions you might have seen on Facebook and on the community tab earlier, thank you to everyone that uh, left some suggestions there, we'll go through them, um, but yes, unfortunately Michael couldn't make it. I had a busy day today, so I couldn't really organise anyone else, or would have given one of you other guys a shout to see if you wanted to do it. Um, so, it's just me. I'm sure we'll try and ar arrange something for the next time. <laughs> I've just seen some of these comments, I'll come back to them in a minute. But, if you're a member of the Team Green Alliance, or something along those lines, I put a suggestion in there where I was going to try and get a, a little mini-series of get to know each other type streams where me and a n other streamer uh, or youtuber or fish person or whatever it might be would have a bit of conversation talk through some general questions just so you can get to know them uh, and then have a bit of a chat afterwards and answer questions from you lot and all that kind of stuff but it's proving to be a logistical nightmare because i think there's about three people in britain that have youtube channels and the rest of them are all American, Australian, or some other place to, that's in the middle of the night whenever we do this. Um, so, I just have to bear with me a second, because my daughter's about to walk in, in her nighty. She's only six, don't get excited. Nope, she's gone. Yeah, so it was proving to be a bit of a logistical nightmare. It just it wasn't happening so I was trying to get people to host streams from the other side and got a couple of half-hearted responses there so I might revisit it and um, by all means get in touch with me if you fancy coming on and having a bit of a chat and gaining a bit more exposure for you and your channel or the type of fish you're into and all that kind of stuff uh, it might be fun if nothing else and um, so yeah hit me up on Facebook or on uh, here on the community tab or email me or grab me in the street and tap me on the shoulder and that kind of thing let me know it's, it's something that might be useful in the future or might be a decent idea 
So me and Mike were going to be number one, but that hasn't quite happened. But we'll still do it. We'll do it in the future. So let me dive back into these comments and go back and see what else was going. So Paul, you were saying something. This is where I read out something that makes me look stupid. On the Bidka, oh uh, yeah, know about that one. On the Bidka, which is the British and International Discus Keepers Association, but it's only if you're British. And we're talking about humic and flu fulvic acids, allegedly miraculous for discus. So I mentioned to someone I know has been using them in a powdered generic form. The bloke, blown? Bloke, I imagine you mean. Immediately rebukes that only ones worth using are the liquid ones. The others sold all over the world are useless. Turns out the co-owner of the company in Denmark that makes this particular product. Surprise, surprise. Yes, so someone who makes a product comes to you and tells you that it's amazing and it's the best thing in the world. We, we haven't seen that before, have we? No, I've been getting a lot of that recently. I got rebuked on a... Um, a website recently oh no, no it was a Facebook group sorry and if you know about aquariumadventures.co.uk shop go there buy all your stuff um, I sell biohome from that shop um, and someone mentioned on a, a thread there and I said I believe biohome is very good and I got attacked constantly um, well, you can't say, make these claims about buy a home, they're not substantiated. And I said, oh, I believe it's good. I didn't say, please buy it from me. Um, and it turns out it's because the guys that run the group don't sell it. So everyone's got an ulterior motive. Um, anyone coming to me telling me that they've got the best product in the market for any particular application, words are useless. You need to see something uh, before you know whether it's going to be any good or not. Um, but yes, Bidka, that's another. It's just, they're all the same. Um, I was a member of Bid Bidka and fell out with a few people uh, that are on there as well. Uh, especially the discus world. I'm sure it's the same for other particular niches. Everyone's just after a fight and an argument. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, let me just catch up again. So, yes, had my ears lowered. Tim Rag, that so Tim is the guy that runs Corbin Discus that I'm always talking about and giving free advertising. If you ever want to throw me a few free discus my way, um, yeah, he looks after Corbin Discus. How are you doing, Tim? Uh, Adam and I go to the same barber, apparently. My life is a gangster. No, that's why I live in Sheffield now because I had to leave my life as a gangster behind in Glasgow. <laughs> I'm not doing a Joey just because I'm wearing his shirt. I'm not going to tell you all about my previous uh, murder convictions and all that kind of stuff. No. I'm afraid I have a very boring and normal life. Well, normal as in I come from Glasgow and that's less than normal to most people. Discus Keeper selling some magic beans. Yes, if you want, I'll stock them on my website as well. They should go down great. <laughs> Mr. Doogie Hunter Hunter, every <laughs> you should have asked Joey, I'm sure he would have come on. He probably would have loved to come on. I, I can't think of anything else that he would want to do better. Um, I did actually make a similar offer to him like that, but all he cares about is how important he is and how good he looks and that how he couldn't dare to give someone like me some of his airtime. Um, plus, I think I'd wipe the floor with him in terms of any argument we might get into. So he's not going to do that live. Uh, do, 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 where are we at? Tim telling me buy a home rocks. Well, you would say that. You did buy a substantial quantity of it. But yes, I agree. It does rock. Adam78. That was me who bought the bio home. Oh, on the UK Discus Keepers group, was it? That we were talking about. Uh, what else have we got here? I use almond leaf if my betters are not doing well. Have I missed a comment there somewhere? What are you talking about, Debbie? Not sure what you mean by that, Debbie. Let me know. Uh, come back to that. The Bidka original forum is now defunct. Yeah, I heard about Bidka coming, making a comeback. Uh, if And whether or not it was the same people or the ones that I kind of fell out with. I believe the the main person I fell out with doesn't even have a fish tank anymore. He's such a dedicated fish keeper, but there you go. 
Uh, hobbyist, oh, how are you doing? I like your new logo. Is that where you got it then? Fiverr. So this is Hobbyist Fish Keeper. That's another channel you need to go and check out. So my plugs for today are going to be Simple Fish Life. We're trying to get him to 500 subs by the end of the year. Uh, and Hobbyist Fish Keeper, just for the accent. Um, but he's just brought out a new logo, which is well cool. So you must have got that off of Fiverr. Is that light just gone out? <sighs> That's going to spoil my next bit. Uh, bear with. Talk amongst yourselves for a second while I turn this light back on because I've got something to show you. In fact, I'll do it the other way around. So, if you were here in last week's stream, you might remember I tried to use this camera, which I've got set up here, to give you some close-up shots of the puffer tank. It didn't quite work because the echo went all crazy. I pretty much took the camera to bits and still couldn't get it to do it, and there was no software way to do it. So it turns out if I just plug in some headphones, that mutes the microphone. So we'll see if that works. I'm going to try and... transition to it. So there we go, we should be looking at... That uh, doesn't really work. I was hoping to be able to show you my... Let me turn out all the lights for a second. We'll just go dark. That's a bit better. So it looks better than this in real life, but if you saw my last video, this was what I set up in my tank. So I've got a little light bar behind the tank. And now I can't find the remote control, but you get the idea. I think that's pretty sweet. Anyway, back to what we were going on about. I'll put the lights back on. The puffers are needing a feed. Ooh. The puffers are needing a feed, so that's why I was wanting the lights back on. Alright. Let's go back and see what some of these comments are. Right, this isn't a we all hate Joey stream. There's enough people out there doing that already and I get into trouble. Uh, I suppose I should mention this first. So we're starting today's stream at 4,430 subscribers. So far I've lost on average 10 users per stream. So we've gone up one. So that's looking good for tonight. Uh, so that's just a little mental note for me so I can see how many people I'm annoying on each of these streams. And I'm sure by talking about Joey that number will skyrocket. So we'll try not to do that too much. Hey, Debbie in Manchester, Joey does my head in a little bit. He's always stressing his fish. Yes, oh, I've made three videos now about Joey and the things that annoy me. And now that I've thought about it more, it's actually Joey's fans that annoy me more than Joey himself. He might just be a bit of a dick. Um, but I've probably... Some of the things his fans have been saying to me, and him himself, but I can let him away with that. Some of the things his fans say to me just really annoy me and I just hate the whole, the whole phenomenon now. So I'm just trying to ignore it and stay out of it for a while. Hey. Roger's Aquarium, what do you think about Ponguru's mega filter build? It is a mega filter, isn't it? Um, I don't know what I think about it. It's pretty awesome, as in it's huge. Um, I'd, I'd never really thought about how you filter something that size, so what we're talking about here is Pond Guru is another YouTuber um, mainly interested in ponds, and he has a huge pond uh, full of various kind of fish, but all kind of native fish if you like, and he's building this mega filter which is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds, it's tons worth of filter media that's in this thing, go and check it out, it's pretty crazy. But it's just like a massive version of what your home aquarium sump might be, or a canister filter or something along those lines. My immediate thought is, wow, that's overkill, but is there ever such a thing as overkill when it comes to filters? I don't know. Yeah, it is in pretty much the whole aquarium world likes to head to head on social media, yeah. Evening all the misses out for the night, so live stream on the 55 inch. Oh, you really want my mug on a 55 inch coming at you. Uh, Discus Keeper was looking to buy some discus from Durham Discus. It appears his website's defunct. Oh, Tim, if you're still on. Uh, I know Tim and 
uh, Steve from Durham Discus are good friends. He'll be able to put you in touch. Oh, and there is my spray bar falling down off the back of the aquarium. That's not a good sign. At least you got to see it. Hang on, let's go over and fix that. Do you remember when I put this tank together, I said I used all old things and reused everything. That's one of the byproducts of using old stuff that doesn't quite fit together properly. It falls apart from now, to now and then. Right, where were we? Where were we? Uh, Ollie Cam, nice trim, thank you very much. Um, all done by my good self. Down the wormhole, good to see you again. Uh, do, do, do. Oh, where are we at? Right, I'm going to have to catch up a little bit. Um, sorry about this. Um, why is that? No. All right, okay. So everyone's saying, hi D, hi G. Paul Schofield. Um, I keep thinking of Paul Scholes whenever I see your name. I'm thinking, wow, I've got a proper celebrity here. Um, Ollie Cam, do you actually make any money from YouTube? It depends what you mean, any money. Do I get money from YouTube? Yes. Once a month they give me a small cheque and it helps pay for a small fraction of the food for all my fish tanks and the water bill and all those things. It doesn't make a dent, so it's not like I'm making millions, no. So, Paul's had some Biohome Ultra Mini in one of your tank for years, happy with it, but no way to compare effectiveness. I was thinking in a few months of gradually swapping the media in my discus tank canister. Yeah. Stinker discus growth log, why does it matter about making money? It's a hobby. Indeed, if I was doing this to be making money, I would be an abject failure. Um. Fish keeping's a hobby. Now YouTubing's a hobby as well, and making videos and doing live streams and learning how algorithms work and all that kind of thing. So while it's fun to make videos, it's um, it's, it's fun to do all these things together. So it's just an extra hobby for me. It's not a money-making exercise. If I do make any money out of it, brilliant. Um, it all helps. But this is fun. This is especially these live streams. These are just to hang out and have a chat and see what's going on. Hey, people for Tank is looking good there. Thank you very much. We're going to give it a feed in a second. Once I've caught up with these comments. Uh, Adam doesn't mind Jory. He's done more good than bad for the hobby. I'm not entirely sure I agree with you, but I have no problem with people liking him. I think he's done lots of good things too. Ponguru's hit the 100k mark. Has he? Indeed. Oh, I wanted to talk a little bit about him in a minute. My spray bar went down. Yes, hopefully it's back up again. Or is it falling again? Nope, I'm just slow. How long do you think you can creep the shrimp in with the puffers? Well, I think we're on week four, three, three or four now. And so far, they're not paying any attention. Um, I should do a collab with Mark's Aquatics. I've only recently found Mark's Aquatics as a channel. It's a really good channel. Loads of informative stuff. Uh, He's actually given me a good few ideas for breeding things as well that I want to try out. Um, I would love to do that. I've got no way of knowing how to get in touch with them. Um, what's my overall channel aim? I don't really know. Um, I noticed you asked that question earlier on the, the community tab. Like I say, I started this channel... Um, one thing I noticed actually was... 
I was looking at an older video that somebody had commented on moaning about the amount of adverts that were in it as if it was anything to do with me, which it isn't. Um, but anyway, that was the, towards the end of October last year, and the start of that video was me um, doing a kind of sarcastic party popper, celebrating 500 subscribers, and that was a year ago, and now I'm um, 4,000 more subscribers, pretty much, since that point. And it's just crazy because I've had the channel for years before that, but never actually done YouTube. Um, because I've said it before, I started the channel purely by taking a few short videos of some discus, I think it was even, just so as I could track their growth. So it wasn't, there was no talking, there was no um, theme to the video or artistry or any of those, not that there's much of that now anyway. But <laughs> um, it was just to to keep track of fish. And then I think I got to something like 300 videos and I made one video which talked about a few of my fish. And I got an extra 20 subscribers. And then I made a few other videos where I talked about discus or I talked about bristle nose plecos or I talked, whatever it might have been. And then I started learning about the algorithm. I think I got a camera for my Christmas or something along those lines. Or it was, it was a new phone that was 4K capable. And I started learning about taking videos and lights and sound. Because if you look at even a couple of months ago, there was always something wrong with my videos, whether it was the light or whether it was the sound that was dodgy or whatever it might be. I was using the wrong frame rate. I come from an IT background, so I like the technical side of things anyway, so that's what got me into the YouTube and bit. So as to where I want the channel to go, I obviously want it to grow, but I'm not going to sell my soul to get there. So I would love to have thousands and thousands of subscribers, because it would mean that I have now understood the algorithm, or um, I've played the YouTube game to a degree, but I also don't really want to make... I'm never going to be Casey Neistat. Um, because this is an aquarium channel, it is a niche. I don't think anyone's ever going to be interested in the vlogging style of thing because my day is essentially coming into this room, staring at this computer for a number of hours, and then staring at that computer for a number of hours, and then doing water changes, and then repeat. And obviously playing with the kids and doing all that jazz as well, but it's not... There's only so far you can go with this. Now, obviously, the king of DIY, he's up there at a million subscribers. Corey from Aquarium Co-op, he's up there at a quarter of a million now, I think. So, yes, it could possibly get to that level, but I've not got the drive to take it there, I don't think. As long as I enjoy making the videos, I'll keep doing it. I'll keep trying to improve and set myself goals. For instance, I want my goal for this year was to be at 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And I'm probably going to be short of that. Um, but it's good to have a goal. It doesn't mean it's a bad thing to want to be successful at what you're doing. So, I don't know if I answered that question, but there you go. Let's go back to... Let's go back to these pee puffers, actually, while we're waiting. I'll try and get back to the chat in a second. The thing about these is... I can't get them to eat very many things. I had also wanted to get them onto snails but they seem a bit small for the, even the smallest snails that I can find. I wanted to get them onto the Hikari Vibra Bites because that's like a dry food and that's good but they're pretty much resolutely sticking to bloodworms and brown shrimp. So let's give them a few bloodworms and you can see them eating while we try and answer the next load of questions. So hopefully, as you can see, if I've not got my mug in the way, they're really personable fish still. They're just like miniature versions of my big puffer downstairs. Always up eager to say hello and... Um, yeah, they're great little fish. Right, let's go back a bit and see if we can get the, the chat going. Paul cuts his hair, his single hair the same way. 
I didn't realise that my haircut would be the the main topic of conversation this evening. In fact, it's nice that I'm even talking about a haircut. I've not had a haircut for about 25 years. I think I started losing my hair when I was about 20, uh, properly. So it's nice to be talking about hair for a change. <laughs> Tiskin's also in IT. That's something that you hate, is it, Ben? That's a great job, IT. It just doesn't make you very popular at parties. And it's also very hard to explain to people what I do. You know that thing where you go to a dinner party, or not that I go to a lot of dinner parties, but when people say, oh, what do you do for a living? Uh, I work in IT. Now, that puts me in a massive, big circle of things, but it's just not worth explaining any more than that, because you could probably kill someone with boredom. Uh, do, do, do. What do you think about Rachel O'Leary and her channel? Um, I don't mind it. I've watched it for a while. I quite like some of her stuff. Uh, Lee and Mandy Butters with How's the New Tank is Discus Keeper? And he says, My lack of patience is affecting it. Yes, I used to suffer with that. And you're right, Lee and Mandy. Is it Lee or is it Mandy? I think it might be Mandy. It is all about patience in this game. If someone had given me that as the main tip years ago, I would have saved a hell of a lot more fish. Ollie Cam, do you have a shop? I do not have a shop. I have a website, and you're more than welcome to go and peruse all the goods on offer there. I also have a merch line where you can buy, not this t-shirt, but my Aquarium Adventures t-shirt and Mirror Adventures mug or beanie hat or dog bandana. What else have they got? Hoodies, bags, all kinds of stuff. And if you go quick, there's 15% off everything. Uh, 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 think of distances after some free advertising. Go on then, we'll let you have some free advertising. Yeah, I did check out your channel a while ago actually, so I think the aim of your game is you're going to post regular updates of how your discus are growing, which is how I started my channel, so you might end up doing this kind of nonsense. Uh, but great idea, yes, I like it. Turn things on and off. Don't give out the secrets, Tim. It is Mandy. Hello, Mandy. So, now all the puffers are just ignoring me. Or ignoring the food. I don't know quite what's going on there. Oh, I think they might have had enough. Proper fat little bellies. So, are we alright with this view? Shall we leave it on this view? You don't, you don't want my face big, do you? But we can change the cameras around later if you want. So what else are we going to talk about? We talked about the puffers and feeding them. I'm trying to get them onto these biohome uh, Vibra Bites, which everything else is eating, um, except the one thing that I bought them for. Um, we mentioned Pond Guru earlier, so let's talk about him a little bit. As you know, I sell his filter media, the biohome. So I won't say I've got to know him recently, but we've been exchanging emails for a while now. Um, you can get my stuff in Canada, t-shirts, etc. They ship worldwide. Apparently it's a bit more expensive to go to America for some reason, but I don't know why. So I think they ship all over the place. Yes, but Richard from Pond Guru, he put out a video, I want to say last week, or very recently, because he's been teetering on 100,000 uh, subscribers. And if you have known him for a while or watched him for a while, you'll notice he does tend to answer all his comments, which must take forever. I don't even answer all my comments, and I'm a tiny little channel. Um, so he's saying he's going to step back for a little bit uh, and concentrate on other aspects of it and not necessarily try and make sure he answers every comment on the, his videos. Uh, and he's there seems to be a big thing in the fish community where people are trying to promote each other. And it's brilliant. I can't believe that it's... For the most part, it's brilliant, and it's all people trying to promote and support each other, whereas in other walks of life, it's usually about trying to knock people down constantly. So I'm loving that. So you might have heard of the hashtag Fish Fam, or the Team Green Alliance, or... Uh, now, Pongur is getting involved, and his idea is... And he mentioned it to me a while back now. Um, he's going to pick up some of the videos 
because the reason I, I know I'm jumping around all over the place, so I apologise. The reason I know him at all is because he jumped on a couple of my videos when I'm still a nobody now, but I was even more of a nobody, and said, nice fish, or have you tried this, or whatever it might be. Um, so his idea is that he's going to support a few of these smaller channels, uh, like myself, like if you make videos out there, like you, that could be anyone. And his idea is that he's all about sharing information. So rather than making the entertainment stuff, it's more about useful content that someone can find useful and inspiring maybe or informative in any way. He wants to let you make a video for him. He'll put it out on his channel and then link back to your channel and all that kind of good stuff. Now, it's a great idea. So if he's got the audience where he's got 100,000 subscribers and a lot of his audience is, it's probably more active than other people because um, because he's been going so long and it is so niche. It's not about people that are going to subscribe to win a competition and never hear from them again. It's, he's probably going to have a reasonably active audience. So you're, if you're making good content or making informative content, um, that'll give you a boost. Um, the, the thing that's always annoyed me is I think I've made one or two out of the 150 videos I've ever made. I think I might have made one or two that were actually useful. But nobody saw them. Um, maybe 150 people saw them. Because nobody knows who I am. So if I had made those videos and had Pond Guru, had Pond Guru put them out on his channel, loads of people would have seen them. And that just makes sense. It's, it's a great idea. Um, so I don't have one to submit to him or anything like that, but I just think it's a great idea and it was worth sharing with people. So anyone out there who has got a smaller channel, and let's face it, most of us have got smaller channels than 100,000, so we could all use that kind of boost. If you're doing good stuff, uh, good educational, informative stuff, and you want a bit of a boost to help you get it out there, then get in touch. Go and watch his video. If anybody has a link to that particular video, I'll see if I can do it myself. Um bit of link in. In fact, I can probably do that myself. Um, check out his video and get in touch. You'll find out everything that he's trying to... He's got a few basic rules. Here we go. Uh, doo -doo. I'll put that in there. And go and check out that video if you want to. Right, let's go back into the chat. Uh, yes, you get my stuff in Canada. Oh, I've already said that, haven't I? Does that mean you've got one of my... Are you one of the four people that's bought one of the Aquarium Adventures t-shirts? Um, Mandy's looking into getting some blind cave fish. What does everyone think? I saw some of them in... Uh, where was I? It was either at Wentworth or at Wards. Um, they had some blind... It was probably Wards, because they get weird stuff all the time. Because there was a lady in there going, Oh my God, this is terrible, that fish has had its eyes eaten. And I did think that was what had happened at first, until we got a closer look, and the guy came over and said, No, no, that's, they're meant to look like that. And they're definitely interesting. They're actually they're very bland fish, obviously, because blind cave fish, the reason that they're blind is because they've evolved with no light, or very, very dark. So they don't need eyes, and if you don't need eyes, you don't need colour. Um, so they're different, because obviously they're blind. But yeah, I thought I might get bored of them quite quickly. Because um, from what I could see of them, they weren't doing much, they weren't very active. Um, but yeah, they, I, I don't know that much about them, so I could be completely wrong. Are there any species of fish that you've had zero luck with and would like to return to? Mine would be killifish. Um, not really. Um, there's one strain of discus I've never had any luck with. I've never been able to keep a yellow discus alive for more than about a month. I don't know what it is. Obviously, it's nothing to do with the water because... All the other ones stay alive, but any time I've bought, I've gone through three or four of them now, and it's always the yellow one that dies. Um, I, well, I've no idea why that is. Um, and I even try harder now if I ever get a yellow one to try and make sure it's okay, but mm, yeah, I've always struggled with the um, What was the other ones that I've never really done well with? 
I've never done brilliantly with betas. I've lost a few betas as well. Um, but yeah, with most things, and it's not because I'm some kind of super guru aquarist. Um, I'm brilliant at breeding cherry shrimp, but I put in zero effort to make them breed. They just happen to like my water, I guess. Um, so I, I do reasonably well with most things. Um, I think it's just about I'm a kind of minimal effort kind of guy, as you might be able to tell by my general frame and appearance. Um, but if I want to breed something, so whether it's bristle noses or cribs, these are all generally very easy things to breed. And it's reading some of the articles that you can, talking to some people that are a bit more knowledgeable than me. And mostly it's not rocket science. The hardest thing has been discus. And again, I didn't really have to go to the lengths that a lot of people have to go through to breed discus with getting our old water and remineralizing it to a certain degree and then keeping all those kind of, I just put them in my tanks and they bred uh, just lucky just lucky right, what else have we got going on here you're doing stuff but you're not sure if it's good I don't know what that means Ben but okay <laughs> Uh, nice idea of this YouTube cooperation. I spend more time on traditional forums, mostly simply discus, trying to convince Alcebeta, yes, I know him, to do similar things among forums. Yeah, I mean, 90% of the internet is there to facilitate arguments, uh, conversations, sorry. Uh, and once you just accept that, you kind of able to navigate your way through it. Any idea where to get wild betta fish from in the UK? Yes, uh, Francis Hu on Facebook or Chen's Beta. Um, you'll find them on Facebook. They get wilds in fairly regularly. Um, ask the king of discus. <laughs> ask the king for some discus tips. He's not a terrible discus keeper. Um, he's I'm going to stop talking. Yeah. Tim, right challenge made. You can have one of my Martin Ung discus yellow lemon for free from me at Carbon Discus. It won't die. It will die. I will kill it. <laughs> That's a very generous offer, but I will just kill it. I don't know what it is about. In fact, I'll tell you what. So my plan is, Tim, that after Christmas, eh, I'm asking all my family to buy me some Carbon Discus vouchers. Um, so... By all means, I'm not going to pick a yellow one, but if you want to chuck a yellow one in at that point, then yes, we'll do that and we'll try it. Uh, Discus Keeper has a flat phone. All right, good night. Nice to have you. Thank you for being here. <laughs> uh, see you later, see you later. Oh, we've got a super chat. Hang on, we'll talk with Carl first. Speaking of betas, I've still not done anything with my six-foot tank with a single beta in it. Can't my makeup. I can't make up my mind what to do with it. Well, these days there's two choices for me. It's either discus, obviously, um, or it's going to be some kind of giant freshwater puffer. Um, if you'd asked me a few months ago, it might have been salt water, but I'm, I'm kind of going off the salty side at the moment. And I'm all about the puffers and the discus. It's a deal, Tim, Definitely. Diskin, what was that for? Why have you given me some money? Not that I'm arguing. Normally people ask questions or want something for that. But okay. When are we doing a drunk stream? Yeah, we could have done that tonight. I was trying to stay sober because I knew it was like 5 o'clock in the afternoon in America where we were meant to be talking to Mike. Um, as always, next week. <laughs> Maybe we should do it together. You can be my next guest if you want, Ben. We'll do a stream together. You can be on the rum and cokes and I'll have a a beverage of my liking. We'll see how we go from there. Um, right, there was another topic. What did I want to talk about? Yeah, so uh, as you say, I'm, I'm not obviously talking to Mike from Michael's Fish Room right now. Um, have I, am I still on this right camera? I'm going to turn out the lights for the puffers and see if they go to sleep. 
I didn't say I didn't want it. You can have my big ugly mug back in full frame for a minute. Uh, but if you do want it back, by all means, just tell me if it was a mistake. I shall get one. I shall give you it back. Um, you were thinking of getting a Mabu puffer. Yeah. You don't think that tank's big enough. Though they do get pretty big. Well, maybe with a six-foot tank, you'd probably be okay. I, I, I guess it depends how deep it is. Because they do get to... Someone was telling me they get to four feet, and I don't believe that. But I know they get to at least a couple of feet, if not a bit more than that. Um, so I've got a Fahaka puffer, and that will get to 18 inches, two feet. And eventually he... Well, I don't know. But he'll either live in a big tank in the garage, or he might live in what is now my discus display tank, and the discus might come in here somewhere. So that was one of the thoughts that I've been having. Um... The saltwater tank to my left, which you've seen in previous videos. It's just not floating my boat these days. Now, it's nearly... It's almost 300 litres, I want to say, but I'll need to measure it again. I think it's a three-foot cube. I can't remember what that works out quite right. Um, and that might make quite a nice discus tank as well. So I don't know. I might convert that. Six by two by two, yeah, you probably wouldn't get away with them with boo forever in that tank. It'd be too small, uh, depth-wise. You wouldn't be able to turn around. Um, can you keep puffers in freshwater? You can. So, if you've just joined, we've just been talking about these guys behind me. These are pea puffers or Indian dwarf puffers. Puffers? Puffers. Uh, and they will live in freshwater quite happily. Uh, there are Fahaka puffers, there are Mabu puffers, which are all true freshwater. The majority of the rest of them, so your figure eight puffers or your green spotted puffers and ones like that, they will start in freshwater, but as they get older they need to be converted to brackish and then sometimes full on marine. Um, so that can be a bit of a, a faff, obviously, trying to get that conversion right at the right rate. Um, do a YouTube Q&A about breeding, etc. with Tim Rag. That's not a bad idea. I don't know how Tim would feel about being on camera, but um, we'll, we shall discuss that next time we come round if you want. Um, if you could have any fish, what would it be? Now there's a question. It'd probably be a shark or something like that, from when I was a kid wanting a shark. Um, I don't know if it's if there's any one fish I'd want. I probably want some kind of dream tank where I had like converted my entire basement into like a huge uh, fish tank that you see the kind of Sea Life Center type fish tanks, where you could just have a red tail cat or seven or some of these big massive monster fish. I quite like the monster fish, um, but yeah, there's loads of fish that I want to try. I get quite excited by crappy neon tetras and things like that <laughs> so my tastes aren't um, they're not hugely outrageous uh, I do like discus uh, which is quite uh, an expensive hobby I guess but I, I, I just as equally like neons and cardinals and things like that so I'm not sure you're going to test your salt water while watching for a bit. See, there's the problem with this salt water business. There's just so much more effort. No, it's not really. Red tails are amazing. That's the one you would have. Another two euros. <laughs> You're asking for a Ferrari. I've, I've, not, I've run out, I'm afraid. Sorry. Red tails are amazing. That's the one that I would have. Yeah, they are pretty cool, but they just probably shouldn't be kept by most people. Because um, they get enormous. I've seen them uh, up close. When you see them up close, uh, where was it? In fact, it was one of the one of the many sea life centers that I visited this year and made videos that nobody's watched. Um, they had, uh, I think it was two or three red tail cats in this enclosure, if you like. And it was seriously, it was over four feet. I had one of my kids laid down next to it, and it was bigger than my kid. 
uh, and they were all rescues that people had bought from a pet shop, tried to stick it in probably a tank that size, and then, oh, I've got this fish, it's got really big, I had no idea. Uh, even the, the simplest and most basic bit of research, I would have told them that it's going to do that. Anyway, let's go back to, we've talked about Pond Guru, we've talked about plans for the channel, we've talked about my ultimate tank, I think, a little bit as well. Um, what pH do you have my pee puffers in? I think it was 6.8. Uh, I've left my pen downstairs, unfortunately. I can't remember. It was in one of my old... In fact, it might be on my spreadsheet of things. 6.8, yes. I set up an American cichlid. It takes all my effort not to say chichlid, which I did say for years before somebody corrected me. I set up an American cichlid tank a few weeks ago. It's so hard to keep clean compared to my salt water. My sand is always dirty and I clean it every day. Any tips? The sand's always dirty. I always had the opposite problem. It was my salt water or the sand. It took me ages to get rid of the diatom stage, you know, that brown algae. Um. <coughs> Whenever it's sand, I always... My first portal call is to make sure your circulation's good. So whether that's aiming the nozzle from your filter outlet, but then you say you were using sponges, so that might not work. But you might need a power head or something like that, you know, like a little circulation power head. Point it at the sand and it just keeps things moving. I, I, I can spend weeks probably doing this, but I often spend a lot of time trying to identify dead spots and then get rid of them. So that's getting power heads and filter outlets to move the water in such a way that it's trying to pick up all the crap off the bottom and throw it up into the water column so as the filter intake yeah, can grab it and take it out. And then you don't have all the mess on the bottom or failing that, because some, sometimes I just can't do it, getting it all together in one spot so you can get it easily when you do a water change. I'll just mute this while I have a coughing fit. Oh, half cough, half sneeze. There you go. Uh, that's awesome. I've always wanted puffers. I've got a spare tank. think I'm going to have a go at it. Yeah, definitely. They're brilliant. If it's pea puffers that you're looking at, they're tiny. That was... I knew, obviously, pea puffers are going to be small. These are proper tiny. Um, and all the, the tank size recommendations that you get are like, oh, you can only have so many. I'm like, are you sure? Um, but they will get a little bit bigger, but not much. I think they get to about an inch maximum. Big fish need big tanks, indeed. Check small YouTube channel from Free Swimmer. Nice chap in Florida who's self-built his big tanks with wood, pond armour and glass front. The latest is 9 by 5 by 2 Yeah, I'll, I'll whisper this just in case my wife's hearing. That's kind of my plan for the garage, just to build like a big monster tank down there with just like one glass panel at the front type of thing. But we're probably a year away from doing that. Powerful Lance with his powerful name. Hey, how you doing? Nice to see you here. Uh, oh, I've caught up. I'm usually hours behind with the comments. Am I going to replace the one that didn't make it? Um, so, yeah, I bought four. I've got three. One died, like, on day two. Um, I might. Um, so, the reason I'm thinking about this is you're meant to keep them in a ratio with, obviously, more females to males. And I can't tell, because these are too young, which ones are the females and which ones are the males. So I'm worried that if I buy a load more, that I end up buying a load of males. Um, because they're not showing any aggression yet at all. Um, and I don't want to buy more to then just get rid of some of them. So as I've got more females, if you see what I mean. So I'm kind of half and half whether I'm going to buy another five, for instance. Because they did say that they might get in another five. So I might buy another five, grow them out and then separate them. And I'm sure I could find somebody that wanted them. Um, I'm sure I could find some takers on the stream right now with the sounds of it. Um, but I, I just don't like doing that, so... Yeah. 
who knows well I can answer that honestly and say if they post on the Facebook page that they've got the other five in stock I'll probably be over there within half an hour and buy them but you'll see Powerful Lance says, why do you always wear the Joey shirt? <laughs> why advertise for that knob? I wear it because I bought it and I'll be damned if I'm going to buy something and spend money on it and never get any use out of it. So I'm calling it ironic sponsorship. If you're planning the big tank, do check free from our very useful step-by-step -step videos. I will, uh, and I encourage anyone in the comments or if you're watching this after the fact, leave me some links to some channels to check out. I do go back and go through the comments and anybody that makes a suggestion I go and check them out and I found some little gems there so I do it uh, it'd be useful for other people watching they can do it as well watch them for 30 days and you'll pick out the females <laughs> if only it was that simple well it probably is actually now when they they do start to show uh, signs and I think it's the males get a black line on their underside uh, and they start to get lines on their pattern, whereas the females they're more spotty and they're more rounded. Um, I think uh, I can make a guess at the moment that I've got two females and a male, um, but it's purely a guess because I'm always correcting myself, I'm not sure. How big is the big tank going to be? <sighs> a pass. In my head it's going to be a million litres, but it will probably end up being... So this, the kind of smallest one I would want to do would be 7 foot by 3 foot. And then uh, yeah, another number tall. Uh, that would be kind of the size of where the racks are now, if you can visualise my fish room. Uh, that would leave space to still be able to get right through the garage. If I decide, or I'm told that that doesn't matter anymore, then it might do the entire length of the garage. I'm not sure. But before that, I think my next big project is going to be a pond in the back garden. I have permission from the kids to get rid of the trampoline uh, and get a pond in its place. So that will be the spring project, probably. So, I'll try and get back to my list. What, was it, what were we talking about? Um, everybody had left me some... not everybody. Some people had left me some ideas, the things to talk about. Because um, if you just joined us, obviously I'm not Michael from Michael's Fish Room. He had some family stuff to sort out, so he couldn't make it today. Um, so some people gave me some ideas for things to talk about. We've talked about most of them. Pond Guru, plans for the channel, an ultimate fish tank. Um, disappearing fish tubers. That, I read that and thought, what the hell is that on about? But I did think about that. I don't know if anybody remembers this guy, but there used to be one called The Rick something 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 it was uh, the rick and a bunch of numbers 20, 25 25 or something along those lines and he was like the original fish fam guy so you know when i was talking about pong guru there saying that he's trying to promote all these smaller channels and the same as what the hashtag fish fam is trying to do or the same as the team green alliance um this guy the rick was doing this years ago so it was all and it was quite funny because I had to go back and look because I was trying to figure out what his name was. And I looked at a few of the videos. So you see some of the bigger guys now all being interviewed by this guy. And his interview style was, obviously, he would write down the questions and give them the questions. And they would record them to camera. And he would make it out and edit it together as if it was a conversation. But it so obviously wasn't. Um, so the comedy value in that. And I never realised it the first time round when I was watching that stuff. Um, so that's that's worth checking out, how some of his old videos. There's even a conspiracy theory about what happened to the Rick. Because he was like, I don't know if he was number one at the time, but he was a big deal at the time. Uh, he was definitely, if there was a fish tube at the time, he was at the top of the fish tube. And he just disappeared off the face of the earth. And then all these rumours started coming out about, oh, is, what's happened to him? Has he been murdered? Has he been <laughs> uh, abducted? Has he... Uh, there was another rumour about he went to work for a certain company and got a, a gagging order put on him and then all these other things um, I'll come back to the aquarium death match in a minute uh, but somebody tried to do a bit of a detective work so I think he lives in Hawaii and he just <laughs> he found out that he'd just moved house and got a new job and couldn't be bothered anymore <laughs> and that just kind of sums it up for me 
Um, there are other ones that I've noticed have disappeared for a while. Um, and the reason that I can't think of any other names is because that's how fickle this YouTube game is. If I stop making videos within a month, there'll be nobody remembered. Aquarium Adventures? What was that? Was that... Was that a shop or was that a person? No idea. Because if you're not churning out content, then you're not relevant and then no one can remember you. So it, all the, the YouTube, how to do YouTube videos all warn you about taking breaks and all that kind of stuff being a bad idea. So it'd be interesting to see some of these people coming back. I don't know if anyone can remember any other disappeared YouTubes, YouTubers. Forest Fishroom, yes, I do remember him. He came back as a drone channel. I found that for a while. Um, and the reason he went to for Forest Fish Room, I think he was called something like Cichlid Man 09 or something like that. Um, he was the first one I ever saw doing DIY, well, blah, DIY gel food. Um, that's where I saw um, the first person make that. Uh, yeah, and he's just stopped. But I think he stopped because he... Um, had kids basically and I know his I feel that pain if I had just had my three kids recently then I wouldn't be doing streams right now uh, they take up far too much time but now they're a bit older they can kind of look after themselves and they give me an hour an evening to do this sort of stuff uh, Mark Boland what isn't he the guy from T-Rex he created African Fish Hub very nice forum for Malawi and Tanganyika also now almost comatose. Bolly one two three four five. That's a new one. On I shall need to check. Well, I suppose I don't need to check that out if he's not doing anything. Yeah, yeah. There's a few out there. These forgotten YouTubers. It's quite funny. I mean, I, some of them are now comatose. That it's hard to. It's hard to get momentum and keep it. And I'm not even sure these days what is the most relevant forums to go on. Um, I'm in the, the lucky position that I now know a few people who are experts in their field, so if I do have a problem I can go and ask them about it, rather than trying to pick through the crap on Facebook forums and things like that. Um, but I, I have a group. I have a, a Facebook group called Aquarium Adventures. Well, feel free to go and join it. It's got something like 3,000 members, and the only person that ever posts anything on it is me. And I never quite get my head around it. Why would you join a group to never use it? What's the... There you go. Anyway, well, that's a tangent. Uh, Aqua... Aqua... Aquaramax? Aquamax? I'm not sure about that one. Still worth checking out Bali for great Lake Malawi underwater videos. See, I've never really got into Malawi. Uh, some of the Tanganyika ones I like, but I've never really been into the African cichlids. Um, it does cross my mind every now and again I think about it so I'll, I'll check it out and see if there's anything to be learned there it's always useful to watch these things um, so I think I might have missed a couple there Discus Growth Log put a toy car one side put a handbag the other you'll soon find out who's male and female Did you just assume gender? Well, I don't think that counts as assuming gender. Uh, yeah, so of the suggestions I got earlier of things to talk about or things to do on the stream tonight, uh, Powerful Land suggested an aquarium fish deathmatch. He didn't go into specifics though. What do you want to see fight to the death? That's my question. I've got quite a few fish here. Um, there's only one of them that would eat any of the other ones. And do you really want to see if a hacker destroy a guppy? It's not a very long death match. Uh, where are we at to? <laughs> hey, powerful Lance says, Mrs. Saltwater Tank broke my heart when I found out it was really an early dude. <laughs> Yes, that was funny. Ah, I thought that was hilarious. So there was a, a channel called Miss Saltwater Tank TV or something like that, or Miss Saltwater Tank, where 
we had a very attractive young lady talking about her reef tank and she kind of came from nowhere and I think she got up to like 30 or 40,000 subscribers within a few months and it, the content was really good so there's no denying that she talks a lot of sense um, but she was also very pretty um, she got real hairy yeah she did <laughs> and it turned out that it was her boyfriend who had the tank and he was obviously just a genius and spotted that oh, if I get this really pretty girl to say all the things I'm going to say I'll get a lot more subscribers and boy did it work and it was going great until uh, they broke up and she went away and appeared uh, what's that program that I saw her on the reason that I, the only reason that I knew is I saw her appear on you know the one with Paddy McGuinness where they line up all the women and have some guy come down take me out is it I just happened to see it when it was on the telly one night and went, hang on, that's what's her face. Um, and then eventually Ryan, who is now running the channel with its new name of Prestige Reef, uh, fessed up and made a video. Um, said, sorry, I've not made a video for a few months uh, and this is why. And it was his girlfriend. Um, but he's he told the truth, he wasn't hiding anything, he was just getting her to present his content. Um, and good luck to him. Yeah, because like I say, the, the the information on the channel was actually really good. So, it was just funny. You can, I can just imagine all these people, like, being catfished, if you like. <laughs> Going, oh, it was a dude. Um, Yes, lots of people agreeing with it. She was very attractive. You should hire a cutie pie and boost them numbers. I should, well, I've got my lovely wife. She just doesn't want to come on camera. <laughs> You're the second person, Dan, to moan at me about the advert shown on my YouTube channel. I get no choice. He's saying, I don't always watch ads on YouTube before a live stream, but when I do, if it's James Corden trying to sell me a coffee maker. What's the one I keep getting recently that's a bit weird? That's so weird, I've completely forgotten. Anyway, now that we've talked about um, James Corden, that, that kind of makes me want to bring things to a close. So, let's have a look. We started, we've gained one subscriber. First time ever a live stream has gained a subscriber. Thank you so much, whoever that new subscriber is. I remember it popping up, I've forgotten your name already. Um, I hope we've done enough to retain that subscription and you can come and check out some of my normal videos. Normal being in inverted commas. Um, so we've shot down the death match. We're not having a death match. Oh, there was another question about shrimp and shrimp with fish, but I think I kind of showed my hand there earlier when I said I'm brilliant at breeding fish because I do absolutely nothing and they just breed. Um, what I am hoping to have soon is Nathan um, from Simply Shrimps and I have been talking for months about doing a collaboration. Um, so we've just reopened negotiations again to start actually trying to get it done so hopefully I'll have a video coming out in the not too distant future talking about shrimp and all things shrimpy um, so I'll try and cover some of those shrimp questions there because I want to expand into shrimp because it's so easy um, I'm hoping that I can do something a little bit different than just cherry shrimp and move into some other um, some other avenues not complaining about the ads. <laughs> you like James Corden, that's unusual. I quite I secretly like James Corden, but that's not cool to say that out loud these days. Um, no, it's just that if someone was moaning at me that the advert before one of my videos, um, that was almost a minute long or something like that, like, I've got no choice in what adverts they show you. And someone else moaning at me, I don't like whatever product it is you were selling me. Oh, God, it's not me selling you it. It's YouTube selling you it. And you do like it because they've been spying on you for years to figure out what advert to show you. 
Uh, Adam's off. See you, Adam. Thank you for joining us tonight. Yes, I think we'll wrap that up there tonight. Uh, <laughs> backwater sucks still. <laughs> yes, last couple of seconds to give anyone a chance for any burning questions that only I can answer. Please let me know, otherwise I'm going to bid you all a fine Saturday night, or Saturday morning, or Sunday morning, depending where you are in the world. And thank you for bearing with me, even though I didn't have anything planned, and um, hopefully we'll get the live stream with Mike rescheduled, and that should be a bit better. Um, but yeah, until then, you'll see a couple more videos. I'm going to start a new thing as well. So if you saw in my last video, uh, the intro, I'm going to put in some stings for other channels. So you might have seen Ben and Simple Fish Life introducing the video last time. Uh, I've got a couple more lined up. So if you've got a channel and you want to submit a video, by all means, let me know. And we'll get that in there. Um, just one of those little things to try and spread the love a little bit. So you'll have seen Ben saying... Welcome to Aquarium Adventures. I'm Simple Fish Life, or whatever your channel is. Just a few seconds. Um, we'll stick that in there, and I'll put a link into your channel, which I noticed I didn't actually do. So I'll go and do that on mine now for you, Ben, because I didn't put a link to your channel. Or did I? If I didn't, I'll change it. Um, and as always, click that like button, click that subscribe button, share this with someone, all that good stuff, and we'll call it quits there. Thank you very much for joining me, everyone.